Superintendent of Schools, Mr. Tom DeBalzi, will now say a few words of welcome to our graduates and guests. Thank you, thank you. 
Welcome everybody to the commencement of 2018. I'm so glad you're all here. A lot of people think commencement is the end of something, but it's actually the beginning. It's the beginning of your lives. You're going to have time to figure out where you want to live, what you want to do, and who you want to be with. You know, and as you, as you go about your lives, I hope that you remember all the lessons that you learned here in Hartford School District you know, in the Hartford Middle School, and or the Ottaquichi School, or the Dothan Brook School, or the White River School, or maybe even the, the um, Heartland Elementary School. Um, I know we have kids here from Cornish, too. So I hope you remember all those lessons. And you know, sometimes it's not just the lessons that you learn in the classroom, but the lessons that you learn in the hallway, and between classes, on the trips, at different events. Now, I can remember a long time ago when I was your age and when I was in school, certain lessons that teachers taught me or certain things that they said that they would have no idea were instrumental in who I would become and, and uh, what I would do with my life. But you know, I remember a second grade teacher, Miss MacArthur, saying to me, um, you know, there was a school production, a big production coming up of Oliver Twist, and she said, you know, Tommy, I think... I think you might want to try out for the Artful Dodger. And I said, who, me? I can't, be, I can't do that. And I tried out and did it. Then I remember a teacher, uh, Mrs. Walsh, seventh grade. She wasn't even a teacher of mine. She was the homeroom teacher. And uh, she said, student council elections are coming up, Tom. And you know, I think you've got some leadership potential. You might want to run for, uh, for office. And I was like, who, me? I, I can't do that. I'm not going to do that. I don't have any leadership ability. And I ran and I won. And, um, you know, I attribute that, that one little comment that she made to, you know, how I got to be here today in this position. So, you know, I hope you remember those lessons as you go on in your lives and, and you draw on them to help you, you know, be successful. And, you know, if you're out there and uh, you need a helping hand or you need somebody to lean on or somebody to talk to, you know, we're always here. You know, once you leave today, it doesn't mean you can't come back and ask for help or some advice. So thank you all and congratulations. I wish you the best of luck and uh, I hope you have a good night. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Balzi. Our program tonight will include student speakers, special awards, and of course, the presentation of diplomas. We're honored this evening to include Mr. George Foley, Harford class of 1968 in our program. Mr. Foley will share some of his thoughts as he celebrates with his class their 50th reunion in a week or two. Please join me in welcoming Mr. George Foley. Good evening and congratulations to the class of 2018. The last time I addressed a graduating class at Hartford High School was in 1968. And I sat where you sit now. I was a member of that class. I remember the speeches that we enjoyed the most were the shortest ones. And I kept that in mind as I prepared these remarks. As I realized that my class, 1968, would look the same to you as the class of 2018 looked to us. That was a pretty sobering thought. They were really old people. We couldn't possibly be that old now, but we are. And the most striking thing about that is how quickly it happened. Be aware of that. Time is one thing that you cannot recapture. 50 years ago, the class of 68 gained the distinction of being the first class to spend all four years in this building which we still refer to as the new high school. The interstate highways were just being constructed. Gasoline was 34 cents a gallon. Movie tickets were a buck and a half. Uh, internet and cell phones were beyond imagination. They simply didn't exist. Life was a much, much simpler time. But there were dark clouds. The Cuban Missile Crisis was a recent memory, as was the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. Martin Luther King had been assassinated only months earlier. Robert Kennedy just weeks earlier. The war in Vietnam was expanding. The 
Cold War with the Soviet Union was nearing its apex. The civil rights movement was in its infancy, and in parts of the country it seemed that civil war was a possibility. There was plenty to be concerned about as we sat where you sit now. <clears throat> Still, we eagerly moved on. For some of us, that meant college, for some, the military, for some, starting a job, some, marriage. We had careers, we raised families. We celebrated the good things in our lives, and we worked our way through the bad things. We knew a lot from our four years at Hartford High School, but what we didn't know then was how much we had yet to learn, and I'd like to share some of those things with you. Number one, complacency <coughs> is the enemy of personal growth. If you are standing still, the crowd will pass you by. Number two, things are not always fair. You will have to work harder than some other people do and have to do some things that you don't want to do. You will be disappointed on occasion, but you will also have experiences that you will treasure forever. Bad times pass. Savor the good, forget the bad. Number three, good things, however you define them, result from your effort, not from luck. Luck, as I've learned over the past 50 years, is often the intersection of preparation and opportunity. So I urge you to be prepared to grab the opportunity when it arises. <clears throat> Number four, it pays to be open to differing points of view and cordially persuasive when sharing yours. Harsh words are long remembered and you never know when they might come back to haunt you. You must reject bias or prejudice that flows from ignorance, but you must also be respectful of other people's views formed by their experiences. Understand we are all products of our experiences. You will not improve the world by demeaning anyone else. And finally, you must make choices that you believe are right, regardless of the consequences or what anyone else may think. You must trust yourself. There are dark clouds today, just as there were then. They are magnified, sometimes exaggerated, in our world of social media and 24-7 constant news. But you will move on, energetically, just as we did, into a world that is perhaps more challenging than the one we faced. My advice to you is this. Keep an open mind. Do not follow the crowd, as you may get lost in it. Recognize there is much for you yet to learn, and embrace every opportunity to do so, whether it's in a classroom, on the job, or in day-to-day -day life. And never, ever, ever take for granted the time you have to do that. I hope that in 50 years, when one of you stands here to address the class of 2068, you will have find that, found that advice useful. Again, congratulations to all of you on achieving this milestone. It's something you should take pride in. And from the class of 1968, I bring our very best wishes for you as you move on to the next phase of your life. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Foley. I would be remiss if I didn't pause for just a second and ask everyone here to look at this night. Who would have been so bold as to suggest that we could have a night like this? We start looking at forecasts in November to see what's going to happen on the 8th of June. And we play that game. This is a spectacular evening. I know we will all enjoy it. It is my honor to introduce Michaela Ricker, who is the class of 2018 salutatorian. I took an opportunity yesterday morning to speak with Michaela about her journey during her time at Hartford. I've also read letters of recommendation that were written on her behalf and spoken to others who know her well. Michaela spoke first about how welcoming and warm she found our school. She said that she found a group of friends and teachers who made it easy for her to be comfortable here. Michaela quickly established herself as one of the top students in her class. She balanced her drive for knowledge with a collection of characteristics that Dr. David McCoy referenced in a letter he wrote on her behalf. He indicated that in addition to her significant academic skills, Michaela displayed creativity, drive, determination, leadership, and a passion for her classes. These words would show up repeatedly in other letters and conversations I had about her. As I spoke with her in my office, she became most animated, proudest of, I think, 
her creation of our Adopt-A-Grandparent program. Michaela said with pride that this program will exist after she graduates because she observed that another student showed the same type of interest that she had and she is handing it over to her. She's rightfully proud that through her efforts, our students will continue to support local citizens whose lives have found them in a nursing home. In addition to serving locally, Michaela brought together her passion for Spanish with her desire to serve through the service learning trip to Peru. When I asked Michaela how she has grown over her high school career, she indicated that she has become more outgoing and she cited her work with the adopted grandparent and the service learning experience in Peru as evidence of that. She also said that she has identified her dreams and is now willing to pursue them. I also need to add that Michaela described how important her lacrosse experiences have been. She said that as a young member of the program, she was welcomed by the older students, and this contributed to her sense of belonging in Hartford. She said that she enjoyed her time as an older player, tasked with ensuring that younger players felt that same sense of comfort. Michaela Ricker is clearly ready to leave Hartford and be successful at the University of Rochester. Please join me in welcoming Michaela. by thanking everyone who has helped me become the person I am today and for assisting me in my successes and even in my failures. Thank you to my parents, family, friends, teachers, administrators, teammates, coaches, and even opponents for pushing me to reach my potential. Also to everyone here tonight, thank you for coming and supporting your 2018 graduates. To the, to, to the class of 2018, congratulations on making it this far. We've been through a lot together. We had our first football game, our first class, our first homecoming, our first morning meeting, and, the la and following all of our firsts are, of course, our lasts. Just this past week, we had our last class, our last sports games, our last finals, and on Wednesday, our last trip together. In between all that, we've helped lead sports teams to amazing seasons. We've starred in various musicals. We've traveled the world and created new clubs and organizations. I think it's safe to say that we've left our mark here at Hartford. The most important things we have learned these past four years hasn't necessarily been the information we've been tested on, rather the skills you simply can't be tested on. I'm talking about the attributes we've gained over the past four years. Many of us have learned how to be more outgoing, have strengthened our work ethic, have learned how to stay true to ourselves, have realized it takes collaboration to be successful, and have found our passions. These qualities as I'm sure anyone in the audience could tell us, will be very useful in the future in order to continue to achieve our goals. The thing I'll miss most, and probably the most important thing we have learned here, is community. Hartford is filled with some of the most supportive people we will ever meet. Everyone has been incredibly encouraging of those around them, adults and students alike. Despite people's passions, they involve themselves in others' interests because that's just the town culture here at Hartford. Everyone enjoys watching others become successful, and even when they aren't, people are there to support them through the tough moments. One thing I'd like to emphasize to the class of 2018, and hope that you all remember as you leave here tonight, is that it's not about the outcome, it's about the journey. Just like we've already experienced, we are going to come across successes and failures, but it's important to remember that the failures are just as important as the successes. As you move on from high school, Make the commitment to yourself that you'll continue to persevere even if you don't get the outcome you've expected. The journey may lead to new and exciting adventures, and it's vital that we embrace whatever life gives us and run with it. Every end has a new beginning, and as we cross the threshold tonight, ending our high school careers, I wish you all success in your future <coughs> endeavors, beginning a new path, and making the world ours. Again, congratulations to the class of 2018. Thank you for all the fun memories, and thank you to everyone who has helped us along the way.
now like to introduce the class of 2018 valedictorian, Brianna Aubrey. Okay. As I did with Michaela, I spent a few minutes with Brianna yesterday talking with her about her time at Hartford. I've also sought out others <coughs> who know her much better than I in preparation for these introductory remarks. During my conversation with Brianna, she highlighted a number of activities and opportunities that she's taken advantage of during her four years at Hartford. It's safe to say that her growth as a student can be represented by a variety of these experiences. Brianna enthusiastically spoke about her learning in both the Honors Program and the I. She proudly shared the changes that her efforts have created within our community, including a commitment to bring Spanish language instruction to an elementary school. Her eyes lit up when describing her end of the year activity with her young Spanish students. This passion for investigating learning is providing her with a sense of the next steps in her educational journey, which will occur at Dartmouth College. When asked if she had a sense of her college major, she said, the study of neuroscience in education. I found it interesting to hear someone as driven as Brianna also say that she does not have one single focus going into college, as many students do, but rather that there are about 50 things that she will be happy doing. Brianna found her opportunity to lead through her experiences in drama and music, both at Hartford and as the co-president of the North Country Community Theater Student Group. Brianna's leadership through NCCT provided her a deeper and richer sense of community theater than simply being a star on the stage. Brianna's commitment to theater at Hartford has included a full range of activities that include the traditional, like our annual musical, the exploratory, our Broadway course, and the H-term show, You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. In a letter written on Brianna's behalf, Ms. Katie Gallucci included the following statement. Ultimately, Brianna hopes to use her education to have a positive impact on others. This is a powerful statement about Brianna. What greater goal can there be than using our skills and knowledge to move humanity forward? Please join me in welcoming the class of 2018 valedictorian, Ms. Brianna Aubrey. amazing family for their love and support. I also want to thank all the families who have supported each of these graduates from the beginning. You have helped create some truly amazing young men and women. Somewhere in my education, I got it into my head that grades are the most important part of my school experience. Now, I cannot be more sure that this is not the case. Sure, it's important to try your best. I believe in making the most of whatever opportunities I've been given. But this is not all that matters. It may seem like a simple idea. Grades aren't everything but it's a lot more complicated than it sounds. The goal of education is to prepare us for life, to prepare us to go with the flow, to take advantage of the hand we've been dealt, to understand ourselves, others, and the world, to keep an open mind. I know I have so much room to grow in all of these areas, as does everyone else. There's never a point where we can say, okay, I've become the most accepting person I can be, and now I'm done. That's not how life works, and it's pretty beautiful. There will always be something more we can do to make ourselves better, to make the world better, and to help others. Reaching this conclusion has been a product of many experiences, but I'd like to share a few of the most memorable ones. I'd like to thank the English teacher who shocked me in my sophomore year with his hatred of number grades. He, like many other English teachers I've met, refuses to accept that an 89.9 .9 is so much worse than a 90, or even that a piece of writing can be scored with a letter or number. I hadn't really given it much thought, but he was totally right. Who's to say what makes for great writing? Besides, grammar and spelling, how can we just determine what makes art, art? And with this, I learned to question the narrative. I learned to be aware and to be smart about what the world was telling me. I'd like to thank the algebra and physics teachers who both taught me to question how we learn. I always assumed that science and math were supposed to be about memorizing facts and formulas. They were about identifying types of algae, balancing chemical equations, finding theta. Don't get me wrong, those things are very useful. The point I want to make is that what is just as, or possibly more useful, is learning to take a problem you've never seen before and design a way to solve it. The weekly problem-solving exercises, open-ended labs, and opportunities to apply what I've learned have been just as valuable as learning how to draw an amide or use U substitution. I want to thank the Spanish teacher who taught me, among many other things, to be aware of people in the world who live and think differently than I do, and face a multitude of different struggles that I can barely begin to understand. 
My junior year, I had the opportunity to research a Spanish-speaking country and then present that country's view on immigration in Spanish at our model UN. Not only was it an amazing experience for learning how to speak Spanish, but it also provided one, uh, a look at one of the major problems our world is facing. I learned the importance of understanding the views of others, and I learned that education doesn't always have to be direct. Interdisciplinary learning can provide some of the most amazing educational experiences. I want to acknowledge that not all learning has to take place inside of a classroom or on a computer. The experiences I've had exploring music and theater have helped me to become a more, a more confident person and have given me exposure to beautiful art. I want to thank my music department family for supporting me and for providing a place where everyone is welcome. My capstone project has provided a more amazing non-traditional learning experience than I ever could have expected. All the hard work it took to create lessons and schedule everything felt so worth it when I watched my students present their final projects on Monday. Teaching an elementary school Spanish class and advocating for what I believe in have taught me so much about myself and about the world. I have discovered something that makes me happy and discovered that I have the power to make a difference. I know that many of you have also made discoveries about what interests you. Some of you are so set in your passion that I know you will find a way to make sure that everyone has clean water or share your musical talents with the world. Some of you don't really know what you want to do yet, or have 500 equally exciting options. Trust me when I say I know how you feel. Deciding on one path is challenging. I know some adults who still haven't decided what they want to be when they grow up, and that's okay. What will continue to keep us going is that there's no perfect set path to happiness and fulfillment. Everyone has different goals, learns in different ways, and seeks different experiences. People are not numbers, and life is not some set formula. We shouldn't be worried about the end goal either. Because what really matters is the journey we take to get there, the lessons we learn, and the people we meet. There will always be choices, but as long as you stay true to yourself, there aren't necessarily right or wrong choices, just different paths to take that will give us the opportunity to face whatever life chooses to throw at us. High school should prepare us for life, so I challenge you to question everything, expect the unexpected, take advantage of every opportunity, make the most of what you're given, and to enjoy the journey. Thank you, and congratulations to the class of 2018. Nice job, Brandon. Nice job. This time I'd like to introduce the class president, Morgan White. I also spoke with Morgan earlier in the week about her educational journey. I also solicited information from those who knew her best at our school. Morgan came to Hartford from Heartland, and she admits to being a little intimidated in those first few days. However, Morgan quickly found herself immersed in activities, specifically sports, and her transition to becoming a hurricane happened quickly. Throughout our conversation, the importance of leading teamwork and athletics came up over and over again. As often happens, Morgan indicated that others saw in her the potential to become a class president before she saw it in herself. Morgan has modeled leading through service. She served her teams and teammates, but beyond our walls, she also served her community. She served through her church during mission trips. She served her community through Habitat for Humanity. She served her world on the Morocco service learning trip. And finally, she served her school as a regular speaker at our prospective student evenings. It is rare to find a young person who has come to understand the deep connection between leadership and service. During her time at Hartford, Morgan has also found her passion. She came to us with a strong sense of importance of athletics in her life and leaves us with a goal of working in sports. This interest was fueled through two internships with athletic departments, the first at Hartford High School, the second at Dartmouth College. I think Morgan's former school counselor, R.D. Jenkinson, summed Morgan up well when he wrote that he is confident that she'll be successful in college because, I quote, she will remain herself, fun, passionate, and genuine. That is a great description of the person I spoke with on Wednesday morning. Please join me in introducing the class of 2018 president, Ms. Morgan White. feeling I will never forget. The feeling in my tummy when I walk into the cafeteria and smell chicken nuggets and mashed potatoes. A feeling of pure happiness. My favorite quote of all time, 
from Kyle Pryor's eighth grade graduation speech. <laughs> It was the funniest speech I've ever heard, and it was the most relatable. His speech summed up middle school, even high school. It showed that we would experience fun times, that many of us make no sense, and that some of them do, like the Fortnite craze. I don't understand what is so cool about this video game. It's just building things and battling against each other. Seems like another video game to me. There have been moments we have all gotten used to, like Patrick McGlone always dressing up for Star Wars premieres and Star Wars Day, even the occasional Pat and Walker lightsaber battle. There's a video that Pat made of this said battle. I recommend you give it a look. Many of us have gone on school trips and can say that we have gone to a different country that we have taught kids English in Peru or Morocco, or that we saw the mysterious Stonehenge. But there is only one of us who can say they got lost in the Sahara Desert, and another who got to say she had an asthma attack while climbing Machu Picchu. But I promise you, Mr. Fogg, these international trips are great. <laughs> we have learned many lessons, like that there are consequences to not doing your community service, breaking rules on back of school buses. And <laughs> and creating drama, and I'm not talking about theater drama. Through all this, we were ourselves and enjoyed being ourselves. We weren't just the star quarterback or the lead in the play. We didn't have the labels of high school anymore because we were our true selves. We had fun times with each other, and we brought together through them all. So I choose to leave you with some more of Kyle's eighth grade wisdom of enjoying life and doing it the funniest way possible, and being ourselves. There was excitement riding down a hill on a bike built by my friend. The trip to the emergency room also brought excitement. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Morgan will now present the incredibly oversized symbolic key to the president of the class of 2019, Ms. Emily Ricker. President Ricker will then say a few words on behalf of the class of 2019. I have nothing. <laughs> so, so here's the corniest thing I could come up with. Emily Ricker, do you promise to use this key for nothing? <laughs> Congratulations, Emily. <laughs> On the class, on the behalf of the class of 2019 student council, I am looking forward to continuing on making this school great. Congratulations to the class of 2018. You're going to do great things. At this time, I would ask the senior members of the band to come forward for their final performance. Our band, under the direction of Ms. Danielle Connerty, will perform In the Mood by Joe Garland, arranged by Paul Murthen.
Thank you. Hard not to dance. <laughs> we'll now recognize a number of students with the Director's Awards. To qualify for this prestigious honor, a student must have a 3.67 grade point average, which is the equivalent of an A or better. These students will receive a High Scholars Medal. Mr. Kevin Christie, our school board director, chair, uh, chair will read these students' names and they're asked to line up in front of the stage. School board member, Ms. Nancy Russell, will present the medallions. Okay. Congratulations to the class of 
2018. Uh, the Director's Award recipients are Havela Arnold, Brianna Arbery, Anna Ballou, Alexandria Bartlett, Maya Bolger Chen, Elise Boyle, Natalie Sharon, Olivia DeFelice, Madison Druge, Tyler Eldridge, Tyler Hamilton, Benjamin Healy, Quigley King, Madeline Koff, Patrick McClung, Lauren Miller, Bethany Perkins, Aaron Plant, Carla Posner, Kyle Pryor, Django Pullen, Michaela Ricker, Ilana Shira, Alexander St. Martin, McIntyre Sunday, All right, Mac. Eve Warner, and Morgan White. Congratulations. Thank you. At this time, Mr. Doug Anton, Director of the Honors Program, will describe the Honors Program and present those seniors who have successfully completed the rigorous requirements of the program. Good evening. At this time, I'd like to ask all of the seniors who have successfully completed the Honors Program requirements to come forward and line up in front of the stage. For honors program recognition here at graduation, a student must meet the following requirements. Earn 15 advanced level credits over their four years while maintaining a minimum GPA of 3.25. Take two advanced placement or college level courses. Attend two lectures yearly at Dartmouth College or other community institutions. <coughs> Attend yearly skills workshops and guest speakers. Commit to completing over 100 hours of community service. Attend a team building leadership retreat. And most importantly, propose, research, complete, and present a capstone project or thesis during their junior and senior years.
Symbolic of their scholarly achievements, honors program students were awarded their red and black stoles at the recent Senior Awards Night. Tonight, they will receive an honors diploma. At this time, Principal Fogg will read their names, capstone titles, and colleges of attendance while the students receive individual plaques to commemorate their achievements. So to receive your plaque, you'll just come up around. Uh, see Mr. Anton. For some reason, the mic seems taller. <laughs> Sure, why? Natalie Sharon, whose capstone was titled Original Saxophone Composition. She will be attending the University of Vermont. <clears throat> Alexandria Bartlett, whose capstone was titled Fostering Mentoring and Friendship Between the Middle and High School. She will be attending McGill University. Kayla Ricker, whose capstone was titled Adopt a Grandparent Program. She will be attending the University of Rochester. <laughs> Hannah Ballou, whose capstone was titled The Keys to Successful Advertising. She will be attending Bentley University. <laughs> Rihanna Aubrey whose capstone was titled Establishing an Elementary School Foreign Language Program in the Hartford School District. She will be attending Dartmouth College. Nice job, Brianna. Bethany Perkins, whose capstone was titled The Effect of Color on Education. She will be attending American University. <laughs> Madeline Koff whose capstone was titled Creating a System of Student Health Activism. She will be attending McGill University. <laughs> Emily Ballou, whose capstone was titled Establishing a School Store. She will be attending Union College. <laughs> Hannah Cooney, whose capstone was titled Athletic Leadership Council. She will be attending Quinnipiac University. <laughs> McIntyre Sunday, whose capstone was titled Hartford Ninja Warriors. He will be attending Haverford College. Benjamin Healy, whose capstone was titled Creating an Outing Club at Hartford High School. He will be attending Tufts University. Ooh. Clara Posner, whose capstone was titled Expansion of Youth Media Outlets in the Upper Valley. She will be attending Carleton College. Ooh. David Thibault whose capstone was titled A Little Adventure in Teamwork. David will be interning at Hypertherm and TomTom. Tom. Each year we award the Phil de Trumbull Outstanding Honors Program Student Award. This award is named in honor of former Hartford High School principal and Honors Program founder, Phil de Trumbull. Presenting this year's Phil de Trumbull Outstanding Honors Program Student Award will be School Board Chair, Mr. Kevin Christie. Who most exemplifies the qualities of a scholar. This year's award goes to Clara Posner. Good job, Clara. For her outstanding contributions to the ideals of the honors program, and particularly her capstone work entitled Expansion of Youth 
media outlets in the Upper Valley. As a junior in high school, Clara designed, recruited, and ran a week-long summer film camp for children in the Upper Valley. She was tireless in her determination to provide a unique learning experience and share her love of film and filmmaking with others. She planned daily activities and lessons, including script writing, storyboarding, cinematography, and editing. By the end of the week, Clara's students had made their own short films entirely from scratch. Clara didn't stop there, however, going on to volunteer <coughs> at the local CATV station to build curriculum and lessons that could be used by anyone interested in filmmaking. Ultimately, Clara's impact was felt by the students who participated in her summer camp, both as volunteers and as participants, as well as generations to come who will have access to the curriculum and resources she has left behind. Congratulations. I now ask that the class of 2018 please stand. It is a custom at Hartford High School's commencement ceremonies for the graduates to show their appreciation to all of those who supported them over the years, particularly their parents, guardians, and family members. The class will now extend a round of applause as a gesture of thanks. At this time, it is my honor to attest to the Board of Directors that the students before you, known as the class of 2018, have met the requirements for graduation set by the State of Vermont and by you, the Board of Directors, as required by state statute and district policy. I also affirm that they are qualified to receive the school diploma or certificates of completion that you're about to confer. Tonight, we have 124 graduates to present to you. All are eager to take what they've learned at Hartford and share it in themselves with the world beyond this valley. Mr. Christie, it is now my distinct pleasure to present to you members of the class of 2018. I would ask that our guests please hold their applause until all diplomas have been bestowed upon the graduates. I would now ask that the class officers and representatives please come forward to receive their diplomas first to be followed by the remaining members of the class. Mr. Christie will be assisted by Ms. Nancy Russell, member of the school board of directors. <laughs> Havela Arnold. They didn't listen to the rule either. <laughs> Those people are screaming on the corner. Michaela Ricker. <laughs> Alexandria Lee Bartlett. Yeah. Clara Estelle Posner. <laughs> Brianna M. Aubrey. Yeah. Brianna. Emily Nicole Ballou. Hannah Marie Ballou. Benjamin Corey Healy. Alexander Stephen St. Martin. <laughs> Madeline T. Koff. Natalie Austin Sharon. Do you mind if I sit right here? Yeah, go ahead. 
Take it. Callum Theodore Monroe Britton. <laughs> Hannah Grace Cooney. <laughs> Madison Alexis Druge. <laughs> Bethany Renee Perkins. <laughs> Maya Bolger Chen. Morgan Taylor White. Sarah Elizabeth Bolanger. <coughs> Jeffrey Dalton Bartlett. Jeff! Go Sarah! Elise Boyle. <laughs> Django Miles Pullen. Corrigan Allen. Morgan Fisk. Olivia Camille DeFelice. Hold up. Sydney Meeker. Bronwyn J. Smith. Alexis Marie Hunt. Casey McGranahan. Tiana Denk. Megan Bushway. Brittany Rose Smith. Charlie Madison Gear. Allie Davis. Sky Courier. Jessica Roberts. Cameron Stone. Cody Jones. Morgan Cubble. Francis Michael Matthew Pascuzzi. Noah Aloysius Dupree. Zachary Moot. Brianna Boyce. Cody Devin Thayer. Cody Dean Wessel. Zachary, Zach. Kyle Elliott Mason. Odin Wesley Mattern. <laughs> Riley Kehoe. <laughs> Michael Olson. Kyle. <laughs> Samantha Yvonne Waltz. <laughs> Kylie M. Bocage. <laughs> Melissa Ann Luce. Haley Rochelle Lord. Yeah! Austin W. Shepard. Eric Zietz. Pat Brady. Haley. Haley. Andrew Daly. Hunter Godet. Chris Hartel. All right, Chris. Peter Daly. Pedro. 
Carly Butterfield. He's coming up. Brianna Chase Davis. Yes. Kayla Marie Davis. Peter. Peter. Corey Lieberman. Amanda Dolly. Brianna Nicole Clower. Aaron Kimberly Plant. All right, Aaron. Alex Rushton. McIntyre Sunday. Patrick Bettis. Aaron, Aaron. Cooper J. Clay. Kobe J. Labonte. Mac, Mac. Aiden C. Satterley. Alexander Valley. Tyler Ray Eldridge. Adam K. Parker. Tyler James Hamilton. Tyler. Cody Rhodes. Justin M. Bettis. Hunter J. Perkins. Morgan Nicole Perro. Ileana Catherine Sirwa. Shaylin Idell West. Andrew Lamb. Anthony J. Shelza. Curtis Edward Steins. Quigley King. Lauren Miller. Emberlyn Warner. Elizabeth Robbins. Seth Hurley. Trevor Gunn. Brayton J. Kelly. Justin R. Bailey. John Rule. Walker J. Albrecht. Hey, buddy. Good job, Brayton. Aiden Betcher. Stephen B. Johnny. Neely Jr. Dylan J. Crowley. David Tebow. Laser Wolf. Patrick R. Marshall. Justin W. Peterson. Yay, Justin! Natalie Marone Patrickwin. Aiden A. Callahan. Noah A. Dickerson. Joseph Bachelor. Mehdi Aruji. Patrick McGlone. Kyle Pryor. Sarah Abigail Morse. Amanda Pachon. Lucia Gabriella Chafredi Ellerson. Mackenzie Lee Roberts. Cameron Austin Keener. Cameron! Georgia Gray. 
Savannah C. Meeker. Lillian McCray. Spencer Hayes. Cameron, Cameron. Alexis Donato. Morgan Jones. Silas Orion Hermans. Congratulations. To the class of 2018, on behalf of the Board of Directors, the Administration, the faculty, parents, and guests, I congratulate you on your accomplishment that is represented by your graduation from high school. Tonight's achievement was made possible by your efforts. However, there are many others who supported you along the way. Take a little time over the next few days or weeks to thank those in your life who partnered with you to make tonight a reality. I want to leave you with one last message and I promise I will keep it short. Hartford has been your community. This has been the place to nurture, support, and partner with you as you dreamed of today and the many tomorrows to follow. You will always be welcome here. As of tonight, high school is over. This does not, however, mean that all your struggles will have ended. All of us are in a process of becoming comfortable with our imperfection. In this quest, we often carry within us a magnifying glass that amplifies our flaws. So often, we are the only ones who see these, yet we spend so much time looking through that lens that we become focused on our faults. I don't believe that perfection is our human mission, nor do I believe it should be a goal. The world you enter needs you. Bumps, lumps, warts and all. While it is a cliche, it is so true, as many cliches are, that our interconnectedness requires that we seek each other. That we contribute ourselves, all of ourselves, to humanity's web. Perfection can be boring, especially on a grand scale. It is sameness, simple, and sometimes shallow. Learning to love the imperfect you allows others to be interrelated and invites them into your unique and interesting life. I found a truth in the fact that everyone enjoys and gets satisfaction from helping others, yet so often we refuse to seek support or ask for assistance. We do not provide the opportunity for others to serve despite our recognition that service is one of the highest human ideals. Embracing your imperfections attracts those who will be your partners. When you leave our campus tonight, please take the words of the poet Ms. Marianne Williamson to heart. In her poem, Our Deepest Fear, Ms. Williamson observes that <laughs> our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light not our darkness that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? Each of you carries within you the ability to be powerful beyond measure, to be an agent of change in your life and the lives of others. Each is brilliant, talented, and fabulous in your own ways, but humans are not perfect. Spend your life seeking that brilliance, celebrating those talents, and becoming at peace with the imperfect you. When you leave Hartford High School tonight, please remember that each and every one of you serves our world best when you shine. Each of you has an important contrib contribution to make, and only you can give that special talent to our world. At this time, will President White please lead the class in changing their tassels from left to right.
Congratulations to the class of 2018. You are now Hartford High School graduates. And on behalf of thousands of alumni who've come before you, welcome. Would the class of 2018 please rise? I will now ask the class officers, representatives, and executive board members to move to the center aisle. You're reminded that once you have finished, to please come back and see your counselor for your diploma. Congratulations to the class of 2018. Or sooner. Hopefully sooner. Or sooner. Let's see if I can find it. 
Oh. Where is that? And then because I want to get a picture of him with Alex and, and, and on the oh, really? Yeah. I'm just I'm bumming it's like I'm not going to be here tomorrow. And he's, 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 is he doing the overnight thing? No. I just he's going on a cruise tomorrow, so he has to go home and get to five o'clock. So he's not going to be able to. Congratulations, Dad. Congratulations. Well, how are you? How cool was that? That's pretty amazing. Can't believe it. I know. Are you going to be going back to your place? Yeah, in a few minutes. All right. So Give Alex a hug. He's gone, isn't he? Did he go? I saw him walking that way. Yeah, he's just going to swing around, give us a hug. And we'll take a few pictures. And I'm going to go talk to the band members. I don't know. I'm looking for Congratulations. I know, I see it all over the Facebook. I'm like, well, why is Well, honey, see what's happening in this country? You know what? They, the girls did get most of the high honors and stuff. Yeah. Well, girls are more mature at that age. It's just the way it is. That's not what's happening. Well, they were when I was a kid. I've got to hit the men's room. There's one right side, inside the school. Yeah, I know, but you, you know where it is, right? Yeah, I know. And, and to the right, isn't it? Yep, yep. I'll be out here. I'm not going to go on, anywhere. Do you know? oh, I do. So you're doing. I'm being, on the street. I'm being funny. Yeah. Do you go on, You want to go through or no? Yeah. I'm going to go through. Oh, I'm going with you. Oh. you never find so, me again. Come on then. Because I'm here. Thank you. 
with just you and him, if that's all right. I can find you if you're busy with other photo ops. Next! Everything look over here. Oh my god. Look here. So much happening. Caroline, duck down a little more. Wait, can we do Miss Nardone in the middle? Miss Nardone in the middle, please. She's like the center of this is your life. Hey! Awesome. Okay, awesome. Awesome. If Miss awesome. Nardone does it, everyone has to do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Alex, yeah, do you understand? I am going gray. Alex and Liana, this is your family. I am. We are your family now. This is your family. We are your family now. I feel bad for the people crouching. Why are we like this? Matt, I hope you bought another SIM card. I don't know, it stopped taking pictures. Andrew looks like there should you go. be a student too. So isn't that kind of funny? Nice job, you crazy kids. Hope we got a good one. Hey, congratulations. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing great. It's crazy. Like, 